morning, everyone. If I can have your attention. Whenever you have volunteers in a group, there's a lot of talking going on. They're very social. I want to thank everyone for attending uh, the volunteer recognition breakfast today. Um, I'd like to start out uh, this morning's event with thanking our presenting sponsor, Rockwell Collins, and they are also sponsoring our adult, senior, group, and business awards. Our other sponsor is Transamerica, and they're sponsoring our Youth Volunteer Award. As many of you know, uh, April is National Volunteer Month, and we want to take time this morning to recognize some of our outstanding volunteers. We are supposed to have Jack Rader, the former general manager of the Colonels, here with us today to talk about how he's involved and been involved with the community. But unfortunately, he had something really important come up, and he's not able to make it. So, but he did uh, want to speak to us through video today and send his message. So we'll listen to that this morning. Good morning. Sorry I couldn't make it to your event today, but I'm so busy. But thanks for the opportunity to share some thoughts on volunteering. Our community needs volunteers. Whether it's a board of director or just getting your hands dirty, this community needs volunteers. On second thought, I think I can make it. I could be there in no time. It's the most I've ran in a long time. <laughs> get my thoughts together while I get my breath. Um, appreciate the opportunity to, to come out here this morning and, and get a chance to visit with everybody. When they asked me about this, um, I told them yes, but I didn't realize how many people were going to be here. I'm used to speaking to groups, but usually 20 or 30, not a couple hundred, so this is more, more people than I'm used to talking to. And then I asked them who, who had been here previously, and they said Beth, Malet, Beth Malicki and Rex Eno, and I went, oh my lord, I don't even belong in the same room with those people, let alone on the same podium, but they said I only had to talk for 10 minutes, so I should be able to hopefully stumble my way through this, but again, I appreciate the, the chance to come here and visit with you, and I know when you're talking about volunteering, I think there's just so many so many different things that you can touch on. Obviously, uh, I spent a lot of years with the Cedar Rapids Colonels, so a lot of what I probably will say this morning um, will re be in regards to that. But I always remember growing up as a, as a kid that my mom at Christmas, my mom would always tell me, she said, you know, when you grow up, you're gonna notice a change. And I said, what's that? And she says, well, at Christmas, she said, you're going to be more happy to give presents than to receive them. And sure enough, last year that happened. No, <laughs> actually it was before last year, but I just remember that, uh, you know, she said that over and over and, and you know, it, it really makes a lot of sense and you probably say, well, it's a great story, but, you know, what do you mean by that? And I think that the big thing is it's, it's giving rather than receiving. And really, when you look at volunteers, I think so much of being a volunteer is giving of yourself, whether it's your time or your treasures or both. Um, you know, you live in a great community here, and you know, it's really our job to, to try and make that a little bit better. A couple of the things that come to mind for me, uh, and again, I think volunteering encompasses so many different things, but uh, in my years with the Colonels, probably the the two players that, that played for the Colonels that probably uh, affected me or the things I remember the most were probably the two best players that ever played here in my time. The first one was the first year that I was here and it was a guy named Trevor Hoffman. And Trevor uh, went on obviously, left Cedar Rapids and went on to become one of the greatest closers, uh, uh, relief pitchers of all time. Actually set the record for saves um, over 600 and then some guy named Mariano Rivera come along and broke that <laughs> rather quickly but uh, I always remember Trevor uh, 
from the standpoint that he would he would want to volunteer for whatever we we wanted the players to do. And he actually got mad at me one day because I didn't choose him to go be a guest judge at a dog show. And I thought, you know, this guy is probably going to make something of himself. And it, it's funny, if you look at it today, he could probably be the mayor of San Diego. Uh, he is so well respected in the San Diego area. If you go down there and ask about Trevor Hoffman, I'm sure everyone's going to have a smile on their face because he's done so much for that community because that's where he pitched for the majority of his time was in San Diego. Um, but I just, you know, when I stop and think about that, I should have known at the time, you know, what he was going to be because he gave of himself. He didn't have to do that. If he got anything for doing the, the stuff that he did for us, it was probably a coupon for $10 or take him out to lunch or, or something like that. The other player that, that I always think about is Mike Trout. And he was here the last year I was here, and it seems like Mike went from Cedar Rapids in 2010 to the best player in baseball in, a, in, in the blink of an eye. But what I remember about Mike is he and another player named Tyler Skaggs would always go down to Iowa City. They, they fell in love with a young cancer patient who was probably only 10 or 11 years old down in Iowa City at the time. And I'll bet you they went down there five or six times to, to see this young guy. And as you, if you walk into the Colonel Stadium, if you go in the lobby area, like if you're going up to the suites, take a look at the, at, there's a wall full of pictures there, and you'll see Mike Trout and Tyler Skaggs uh, sitting on a hospital bed with a young cancer patient. So, you know, to me, those are the things that really kind of stand out. And, and with the Colonels, we have so many opportunities to do those types of things for people, you know, and that, that's just part of the role. I know in 2008, you know, when we talk about being able to do something in the flood, you talk about the best of times and the worst of times. I remember during that flood, uh, fortunately the colonels were on the road for 11 days because of an all-star game, a uh, road trip, just, I mean, we were very, very lucky we weren't home. First of all, we wouldn't have been able to play, but second of all, it really allowed the city to kind of use the ballpark as a, as a command center. I remember the parking lot was full of city vehicles. The city officials would meet there every morning, get their meetings, decide what they were going to do and move on. And we'd get up and make them coffee and get rolls. And then Meals on Wheels uh, had no place to work out of. So they came to the ballpark for a couple months and actually worked out of our kitchen. And we shared a kitchen with them. So even though that was a terrible time for Cedar Rapids, uh, it was a, a good time in that everybody got a chance to really step up and help out. In, in our case, I think it was, you know, just being able to be there. Um, we were high enough that they didn't have to worry about water at the ballpark, so it worked out well. And one of the things, you know, that spawned from that was that uh, minor league baseball came in after the flood and gave a check for $25,000 to uh, uh, Big Brothers, or the Boys and Girls Club, the Boys and Girls Club, I believe it was, and um, the president of minor league baseball at the time that he was here, he said, you know, he says, we need to do more for Cedar Rapids because we gave him a little tour of the city and he got to see the, the devastation and the flood. So what spawned from that was that um, we were able to work within this community with a lot of different donors, a lot of different uh, organization sponsors to really go out and redo Jones Park. And um, from that, came what they called the League of Dreams. And I always get a kick out of this story because I tell people, you know, with the League of Dreams, uh, it was, we were really set up for kids that maybe didn't have the funding to, to play baseball. Uh, maybe they couldn't join the travel teams. They couldn't do some of the things that, you know, the other kids could do. And that program has, has gone from, I think, 75 kids in the first year to over 200 kids. They've actually, uh, always letting them use their softball field so they can get out there and, and expand that league and have more diamonds to, to play on. But again, uh, it was for kids that were really affected by the flood, maybe kids that didn't have the money to play baseball. They got, um, they get bats, balls, uh, umpires, coaches, gloves, all of that stuff has been furnished. And I always get a kick out of it because one of the funniest things that happened that first year was that we decided at the end of the season that they could come out, we were going to give them uh, uh, a chance to come to the Colonel Stadium. They got to play on the field 
This is just second and third grade graders now, so remember, we're talking about pretty young kids, but they got to come out and play a game on the field, and then we were going to uh, feed them afterwards, and they were to get a hot dog, uh, chips, ice cream sandwich, and a drink. So everybody's going through the line, and about, uh, I don't know, looked like everybody had been through, and this little kid probably, uh, well, obviously second or third grader comes up to me, and he says, he says, I didn't get my drink yet. And I said, you didn't. His whole face was covered in purple from the drink that he had previously. <laughs> but it's the kind of thing, you know, you really, I mean, when I look back, uh, that's the kind of thing that you really live for. I mean, it's to be able to put a smile on, on, on people's face. And it's no different when we had the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts camp over, you know, to see the parents would get up in the morning and be like, wow, find me a bed, will you? But the kids, I mean, they would have just the, the greatest time out there to sleep at the ballpark at night and get up and, you know, have a small breakfast before they leave the ballpark. So, you know, again, I think it's, you know, with the volunteer part of it, there's just so many angles and so many things that you can do. Um, I remember Ryan Sandberg, uh, he was a manager for the Peoria Chiefs, obviously a great Hall of Fame baseball player for the Chicago Cubs. But the thing that always surprised me about Ryan was that every time he'd come to the ballpark, he would sign autographs for the fans. He didn't have to do that. He wasn't getting any paid, paid any more money, but he would sign autographs. And one day I looked out, we, we actually had a rain delay, and I looked out, and sure enough, there he is standing out there in a rain delay. I mean, it wasn't pouring, but it was raining, and he's standing out there signing autographs for the fans. Another time he was here after the game, he was signing, he'd sign after the game too, so people would wait till the game would be over. They'd go down by the bus and line up and he'd sign every autograph for the people down there. And I was standing down there one night because we tried to keep monitor a little bit, and the players on the bus were complaining that they wanted to get back to the hotel. And he went on that bus and he made all those players get off the bus and get out there and sign autographs. <laughs> he said, you know, you've got a little more to give than just play the game and worry about getting back to the hotel. So I thought the example that he set was really great. It was one of the boards that I'm serving on now that uh, with the Convention and Visitors Bureau that we're trying to get the Beat Baseball uh, World Series to come to Cedar Rapids. We, we bid on it and didn't get the bid for 2014, but Mary Lee Malmberg from the Convention and Visitors Bureau is still after it. We're, we're hoping to get that bid in 2015. And what it is, it's, it's based, it's softball for the visually impaired. And I, we went to Bowling Brook, I think it was two springs ago to watch, to watch a game. And I'll tell you, once I saw that, I said, you know, that's gonna be my mission right now. Is my, my number one volunteer thing will be to help bring that beat baseball uh, World Series to, to Cedar Rapids because it's just the camaraderie you see there and what we take for granted every day. Um, you watch these people play and the excitement. Here we are in the hotel the night before they're playing and they're walking, you know, they have guide dogs, uh, people helping them, they're in wheelchairs, whatever the case might be, and they're talking smack to each other. We're gonna kick your butt tomorrow. I mean, you, you talk about people who really, truly want to play the game. And, and when I went out and watched that, the first thing I thought was, I'd be scared to death. Because even if you have some vision, you can play, but everybody puts on a blindfold. So everybody plays equal. And I told the lady that I was sitting next to, I said, you know, if I was playing this game, I'd stand there probably and not move and hope nobody ran into me because I'd be scared to death you know, that you would get hurt. Well, we take for granted that you can go out and play and see. Just go out there and try and play the game and put a blindfold on and see how easy it is to play. And what, what was amazing is how good, you know, these, these players are. So, uh, again, you know, there's just so many different things I think that volunteering includes or encompasses. Um, like I said, we've got a great community. I hope I've said something here this morning that might inspire you to, to go out and do something, whether it's being on, like I said in the video, being on a board of director, or whether it's just watering the ball field, you know, whatever you, you can do, 
I always say that my, one of my favorite sayings is hope springs eternal. And when you get a morning like today, you know, it's one of those days where you want to jump out of bed because you said, finally, you know, it's going to be nice. The sun's coming out. It's going to be warm this weekend. You really feel good about life. A lot of people are going to be doing a lot of things this weekend, whether it's the yard work or going to watch the colonels play or watch your grandson play or your daughter or your son, um, different sporting activities. It's, it's just going to be a lot of fun. But one thing don't forget about is, you know, what can you do for somebody else? Because like I said, volunteering encompasses so many different things that I think you can do and make something better, make someone else smile. Um, because you're always going to feel better. My mom always said, you know, if you do the right thing, it's always going to come back to pay a benefit to you, and, and, and it certainly does. So I'll leave you with that. Again, I thanks, thank you for the opportunity to come today and talk to you briefly about this, but uh, hopefully have a great weekend and help somebody out. Thanks. sharing your story with us today. We really appreciate you finding time out of your busy schedule and finding it important enough, enough to be here. Um, as we volunteer, as volunteers in our community, we know how rewarding it can be and how good it really makes us feel. Uh, sometimes though, we forget how important volunteers are to the people that they serve and the people that they help. So today we've got Monica Soto from the Catherine McCauley Center. She's going to tell us a little bit about how volunteers have changed her life. Everyone, please welcome Monica. Good morning, everyone. Have you ever felt lost, alone, without hope? Have you ever thought that some divine power put someone in your life to help you? When I arrived in the U.S., I felt like an intruder. I couldn't speak or understand, um, not just the language, but the white whole blown people. When I moved to my first apartment, all the white people in the building waved to me and smiled. I always ran the other way with the fear that they would speak to me. And I would have to answer back with one of my few sentences that I had learned in English. I don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I promised to myself that I will learn English no matter what, so I can say back, I'm sorry, so I can say hello back to the kind people to wave to a stranger in the hallway. Someone told me about Catherine McCauley Center, a place that you can go and they get you an English tutor. I said, wow, that sounds very expensive. She answered, it's free. People volunteer their time. And I said to myself, well, if it's free, why not try it? As soon as I stepped through the door, they welcomed me as a friend, and they interviewed me in my own language and they gave me a tutor, as they called them. But for me, it was more than that. It was a teacher, and it was a light in the tunnel. It was funny how we both got excited when I started mumbling the words that sounded like they were trying to teach me. But when I saw their genuine concern about my frustration, and we shared with happiness my achievements. I never saw them as, again as the tall, blonde people. <laughs> they were my friends. I am profoundly thankful to my tutors for giving me my voice back so I can share my experiences, for teaching me how to survive in this country, but the most important of all, for giving me hope when I felt lost. For giving me the hand that I needed to stand up every time that I fell. If you never considered being a tutor, 
because you feel that you are not a teacher. Let me tell you that you can make a difference in someone's life. You can be the hand that we're trying to reach, but no one grabs. You can be the inspiration that they need to overcome the fear of saying hello to a stranger in the hallway. You can make them feel at home and not an intruder. To them, to my tutors, who share their time, their knowledge, and their experience, to my friends, my respect, my appreciation, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Good morning. I'm wondering why I got picked to follow that. That was wonderful. <laughs> Always raised the bar really high for me. Um, wonderful words, and as I'm listening to Monica, it just reaffirms once again why I choose to stay and live in this community. Uh, we're a community filled with abundance and gift giving, and we can do so much, uh, so many great things. And uh, that's why we're here today, in fact, is to honor uh, some of the volunteers of our community who step up and do some amazing things uh, for us. So in the spirit of the one of the most compassionate and gift-giving uh, members of our community, William B. Corton, uh, the man whose uh, name is attached to our community, the Corton Society, uh, we understand the, the power of volunteering and the impact it can have uh, beyond just financial contributions and advocacy. And so we, we are uh, very pleased to be a part of this volunteer breakfast and uh, the awards here this morning. So on behalf of the Corton Society today, we're gonna award five outstanding volunteers in our community. Um, and I wanna tell you a minute about how the winners were selected. Community members had an opportunity in February to nominate uh, people and groups that they felt uh, were doing outstanding work in volunteering over the past year. Uh, we received 42 nominations this year. Uh, the Corton Committee, our committee then met and made some finalist selections, and then those selections were put on the web and the public uh, was allowed to vote for the winners. Uh, this year we had 9,500 votes, which is the best ever for us, which is outstanding. So in the next few minutes, we're gonna make those awards. Uh, we will ask that when the winners are announced that they come up on stage to receive their their award, and if they would like to say a few words, they can do that. So, Kara, I'm gonna kick us off. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now on to the nominees. The Youth Award is sponsored by Trans America's Tomorrow's Makers. The nominees for Outstanding Youth Award are Isaac Ibsen for the, his work with the Young Parents Network, Alyssa Olson and her work with the Kittisons and the National Czech and Slovak, Slovak Museum and Library. And Josie Wagner and her work with Prairie High School Key Club. And the winner is Isaac Ibsen. Congratulations, Isaac. Isaac gives his time and treasure to Young Parents Network. For over five years, he volunteered his time to participate in YPN's only fundraiser, Broadway Maybes. His role was the raffle expert and guest judge. Isaac has also volunteered for the holiday dinners and parties, YPN's We Care shopping night, and summer picnics. In addition to this, for his birthday, he asked his friends to bring a toy for YPN rather than for himself. He then donates these to the We Care shop. Congratulations, Isaac. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It means a lot that all you guys voted for me and all the other nominees, I'm sure, did a great job. Thank you so much. The next category today is Outstanding Adult Volunteer. The award is sponsored by Rockwell Collins. And the nominees are Leanne Lair, 
for her work and creation of Families Helping Families. Mary Allie Miller and her work with the Writers Club of Cedar Rapids. Joseph M. Sorensen and his work with Willis Dady. And the winner is Leanne Lair. Congratulations, Leanne. In 2004, founder and former foster care mother of 27 children, Leanne was given $100 designated to help the community through a pay it for a challenge through her family church. Leanne knew firsthand the many loopholes and resources available to foster children. This challenge was all Leanne needed to fuel her cause. She was determined to make the lives of these deserving children better. After recruiting others in the foster care community, Leanne was able to make a difference in the lives of foster care children by creating Families Helping Families. Congratulations, Leanne. I just wanted to say thank you, and I love being able to come to events like this just to make awareness of the need that we have in our community to help kids um, in foster care. We have over 900 kids in Lane County that are in foster care, and we have our work cut out for us, but last year alone, Families Helping Families helped 1,300 kids with the services that we provide, and I just wanted to say thank you. Good morning. The next category today is Outstanding Senior Volunteer, which is also sponsored by Rockwell Collins. And the nominees are Mike Boyle and his work with various organizations in Cedar County, Dick Panache and his volunteer work with the Writers Club of Cedar Rapids, and Mark Zager and his work within the law field in Cedar Rapids. And the winner is Mike Boyle. Congratulations, Mike. Mike has volunteered hundreds of hours helping different organizations in Cedar County. He has been part of the Tipton Hard Acre Community Garden. While involved with this, he helped harvest over 14,000 pounds of fruits and produce to donate to area food pantries, nonprofit care centers, senior housing, senior diner sites, individuals, and families. Mike continues to serve his community with his involvement in the Tipton's Lions Club. Congratulations, Mike. I also want to thank you, and uh, this, uh, this is going to allow me to uh, pay, the, uh, pay this forward and uh, allow more people um, to have a, a meal and uh, work with other volunteers also in this project, so thank you. What a great group of individuals we have within our community. We also have some great group volunteers that work together to help out. The next category today is Outstanding Group Volunteer. This award is also sponsored by Rockwell Collins. And the nominees are the Black Sandpaper Crew, and their work for the Cedar Valley Habitat for Humanity, the Herring Family, and their work for the Iowa Valley Habitat for Humanity, and the Travis Family, and their work with their community. And the winner is Black Sandpaper Crew. Congratulations, the Black Sandpaper Crew. Tom, Ron, Bill, and Tom are the members of this group. Not only does this crew lovingly offer their time and talent, they capture the spirit of Cedar Valley Habitat for Humanity's mission. They faithfully put in 40-hour work weeks as if it was a regular job and do it all with a smile. They serve on the construction committee and regularly attend home dedications, presenting keys to the overjoyed families. Habitat feels very blessed every day to have this vital team. Truly, they could not do what they do without the crew. Congratulations, the Black Sandpaper crew. For us, as a group, it's a fun thing for us to do, but we enjoy seeing the eyes light up when we can turn the keys over to a house that gives another family a chance to move up. And we thank you.
The next category today is Outstanding Business Volunteer. This award is sponsored by Rockwell Collins. The nominees are Benchmark and their countless hours of volunteer work in our community. I'm on Communications and their involvement with Meals on Wheels. Junior League of Cedar Rapids and their work with AMP meetings, Achieving Maximum Potential, and Foundation 2. And the winner is I'm on Communications. Congratulations, I'm on Communications. Imon has been volunteering for Meals on Wheels for over a year and have made a huge contribution to the agency and clients. Imon provides 20 volunteers once a month and drives 10 routes, providing about 100 seniors with meals each month. They have also volunteered for the Lunchbox fundraiser. Congratulations, Imon Communications. We'd like to thank Cedar Rapids. Uh, our mission and vision of our company as a local company here in Cedar Rapids is to give back to the community. And we take that seriously and we appreciate everything and seeing those smiles on the, the folks when we get to their home with their meals and stuff, it just makes you feel so good. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we have some really amazing volunteers in our community. It's so heartwarming to hear the stories um, and to meet the individuals. Each of the winners today will receive $500 to donate to the nonprofit of their choice. I want to congratulate the winners and all uh, the nominees, the finalists, everyone who's here today, and even those who couldn't make it. One of my favorite parts of this awards process is when the nominations come in and getting to read all the great things that these individuals and groups are doing in the community. Um, it really makes me feel good about what's happening uh, and how it really is strengthening our community. I would like to thank the Court and Society. I know they had a really tough job uh, going through those nominations and selecting the finalists, um, but it, it was a very rewarding job and I think they felt very good after doing it. Um, I also, as you leave today, want to encourage you um, to think about how you can step up to the plate and volunteer, or encourage someone to volunteer alongside of you. United Way has different ways to reach out uh, to the community and find out about volunteer opportunities. We have our volunteer app that you can download, and then also our website, unitedwayofeastcentraliowa.org backslash volunteer now. There are 100 organizations with over 175 different volunteer opportunities out there. Uh, in our surrounding communities. So there's a menu to choose from. You can volunteer once a week, once a month, once a year. Uh, but I encourage you, if you're not currently volunteering, um, to check out that site. I would like to thank our sponsors again uh, for making this event possible. Also for Jack Rader for sharing his story uh, and Monica for sharing her inspiring story also. Uh, we asked the winners today to stick around because we are going to be taking some photos. Uh, the photos and video from today's event uh, will be posted on our website. Uh, we can give another round of applause to all of our volunteers today. thank all of you for being here, for starting your day out with us, and hope you enjoy your weekend. Thanks for coming.